This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Buddy McGirt. We're here, we're in London. AJ, Dillian White, first, they, they face each other for the second time, but not their first time. How are we feeling? Sort of, you're back in the UK, how's things been? It's been, it's, sorry, Dillian's already, already in camp, but how's things been with you, mate? Everything's great, you know, the UK is great. They always treat me well here, so I can't complain. Dillian White is back in a massive fight, a big rematch. Um, when this first fight sort of was rumoured, but offered to you, Dillian said it was straight away, said it straight away, wanted it straight away. Right. Why do you think the time is now that, they, that AJ and Dillian White I mean, face listen, off? Who else, who else is out there? I mean, you know, everybody else is, you know, fighting everybody else. So who else is left, you know? So, I um, mean, Dillian kept saying he wanted this fight. And now here we are. What's it like being sort of camped so far with Dillian over in Florida? Great. Camp has been great, you know. I had Dylan in camp, Dan Aziz and uh, Callum Smith. I had all three in camp, so it's been great. What's that like for you as a trainer to have sort of all, all them three in camp? I mean, they're all sort of, they're common, they're all British, so yeah. they must all get on well. What's that like to have in camp? Is this sort of makes life a little bit easier for you or is it a little bit stressful when no, you sort of... It's not stressful because they're great guys and they're great guys to work with and they're all friends, they all get along with each other. They all come to the gym because they all train at different times, so they all come and support each other. Is it good to have a dynamic like that, where they're all sort of where they're all from the UK? Yeah, they're all that, you know, it's one big family, man. That's where it should be. They get the they get the best out of each other. You so your second fight with Dillian, working with him. When you first linked up, when you sort of first linked up with him, what were the sort of the main goals that you wanted with Dillian first working with him and sort of the, the both sort of the path that you wanted to align with him? Well, the first thing I really what we met in uh, in Liverpool. And uh, it was the night Dan Aziz fought, as a matter of fact. And then the next day we got together, we did some mitts. And then they called me two days later and said, yeah, Dill wants to work with you. And here we are. And when you work with fighters experienced as Dillian is, he's been around, he's been at the top, he's fought for world titles. What would you say your aim now, where you compare, compare him to a fighter who's sort of just coming through, just turned over a pro, where you, where you work with someone like Dillian, how would you adapt and how is it different to work with a guy like Dillian who's it's, so experienced? It's, it's not difficult because he's, he's a guy who's willing to learn. So when you get someone that's willing to learn and do what you ask them and you show them, that makes the job so much easier and it makes it fun. How big do you think this, this rematch is for Dillian in his, in his career at the time? Think, you know, I think it's like fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world for him. And talking of the heavyweight championship of the world, he sort of come up short against Tyson Fury before. With this fight now, looking at it, how big of an opportunity is him for then to jump back in the mix? And if he beats AJ, he's back in there with the big boys, or the Wilders there, guys like that. It's massive for him. Well, right now, I'm just going to focus on Joshua right now. I don't like to put the cart before the horse. But obviously, it would be important, like, yeah, you know. Without a doubt. But right now, just, we want to focus on the 12. Absolutely, absolutely. And how do you deal sort of with the pressures and everything that goes into a big fight like this? You've been in so many big fights before, you know. It's another, day, another day in the office. That's fair enough. But moving on, sort of, you just mentioned Callum Smith there. He's in a massive fight against Artur Baturbiev. Yeah. Um, sort of touching on him. What's camp been like for him? How big has that been for him? Camp is great. It's a big fight. You know, he got three world titles on the line. You know, the WBCA, I believe, the IBF, the WBO. And uh, he's excited, and uh, I'm excited for him. And you know what I mean? And uh, you know, we're just doing what we have to do to go get these belts. Another fun with him, how do you prepare for someone like Baturbiev who he's knocked out everyone in his face? Sort of potential signs of, of wear and tear with him, but he's knocked out everyone in his face. He's sort of labeled as a monster. Everyone builds him up to be sort of this big star. With someone like Callum Smith, how do you even how do you prepare for a thing like that? Is it about sort of do you almost sort of own it in a way that he's this monster and you're, you're, you're getting ready for, for the best Baturbiev that's possible out there? Oh, we're getting ready for the best Baturbiev because we know that he's going to step up his game with Callum. So we're getting ready for the best that there is. Whatever he has left, he's going to put on the line and we're preparing for that. Buddy, do you want to say thank you for your time? I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. And, uh, My pleasure. I'll see you in a bit. Thank you. All right, thank you.